This film was made in Japan. It tells the story of 23 fishermen, 23 victims of a bomb exploded 70 miles away, innocent victims. 1945, August the 6th, Hiroshima. In an instant, 247,000 human beings were destroyed. Three days later, another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. There, 40,000 were killed. Perhaps it was even worse for those who survived. In the following years, millions were spent on atomic research. Great power in the hands of mankind. Power to light whole cities, to turn back rivers, to transform deserts. And still the scientists go on, answering the questions. How can more energy be released from matter? How can we harness this energy to serve men's needs? Coal would soon be old-fashioned, so perhaps might water power be. But there was also the arms race, and the governments direct the scientists to experiment for war. Then, Bikini, March 1954, the most important test of all. For the first time, the Americans were exploding a big hydrogen bomb. The experts promised an explosion 700 times more powerful than Hiroshima. Some of us protested that it should not be done at all. But the experts said it was necessary for defense. They also said it would be safe. The experiment was over, but the experts had been wrong. News headlines flashed across the world. A Japanese fishing boat 70 miles away had been smothered by atomic dust falling from the bomb. In Tokyo Hospital, there could be no doubt. These men were suffering from atomic radiation. Two men's faces were scorched and blistered. Deadly ashes were found all over the ship, and strong radioactivity. What would the experts say now? An accident due to weather conditions beyond their control? The Japanese were in no mood for glib replies. These fishermen had aroused a nation's memory of what had happened before. The Americans flew these men to special hospitals for treatment. But the warning for the Japanese, as for every one of us in the world, was there. One man has since died. The ship's cargo of tunnyfish was found to be radioactive and had to be buried in the ground. Catches brought in by other ships were radioactive too. They had to be thrown back into the sea. Yes, this was the grim warning brought by the fishermen. If one bomb could do this, then where is it all going to end? This diagram shows the effect of one hydrogen bomb. It would completely flatten everything within a radius of 10 miles. If that were London, Few of the six million people in the centre would survive. 
the heat would produce fatal burns and large-scale fires over an area of 3,000 square miles. Five bombs would cover the whole of Japan, and Japan is roughly the same size as Britain. That is, five hydrogen bombs. The Cobalt bomb has yet to be tried out. But the story did not end there. Radioactivity generated at Bikini was carried along by the equatorial currents, contaminating whatever it touched. A Japanese research ship set sail for the Bikini waters. They tested radioactivity in the atmosphere Fish were brought up from the bottom of the sea, and despite what was officially given out by the American government, great areas of the Pacific Ocean were found to be affected. The radio ash was still being carried in the stratosphere. Soon after the explosion, Japan was deluged with rain. The rain went on for days, and it was radioactive. Now the people had to trust the scientists, had to wait to be told the Geiger count of each downpour. In every village, the crop had to be brought in and tested. Every time you went to buy food, you wondered, dare you eat it? No water could be drunk without first waiting for the tests. The Japanese harvest was ruined by unusual cold and by more rain than most people could remember. Of course, the experts would say it was mere coincidence. But you and I would wonder just the same. And like this mother, we would wonder about the future. We would wonder about our children and the children to come after. This was Hiroshima in 1945. This is what you would remember. This is what the children of Hiroshima remember. This is Hiroshima today, where people are still crippled where some are kept alive only by constant blood transfusions. The Japanese ask for no pity. They say, outlaw the bomb, let us be the last victims. They speak after ten years of pain and fear, and now they speak with determination. They say to all of us, the experiments must stop. Throughout the towns and villages of Japan, the people, young and old, are adding their signatures to this appeal. Stop the experiments, outlaw the bomb. Dare ignore this warning.